All right. Sounds good. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. So the first thing I always like to start with is, you know, how much writing are you doing outside of songwriting, whether it's, you know, journal writing, anything like that. I do find that songwriters most intend to do other types of writing, but is that that way with you? Do you do other types of writing? Lately, not so much. Um, you know, I, I come from that background. Um, when I was in high school, I would, there was a certain period when I was probably like 17 or something like that, where it was just, I was just an angsty, you know, just dealing with, with, with being in high school, right. Uh, just angsty teenager. And that was my way of just, uh, getting it all out. You know, I, I had a notebook and I would fill it. I would literally fill the pages with stuff, just like free writing type of stuff. And I was listening to a lot of music at that time. Um, you know, uh, a lot of Beatles stuff, a lot, a lot of everything. And um, it was a good time um, for for just developing, I think. Has, has being a parent made you more disciplined writer? Because you know, I've only got an hour, 90 minutes, 30 minutes, so I've got to get it done then. Man, I just finished an album, you know, and, you know, I've been putting out the album. So literally... I packed like a hundred records in the course of like a week. That's all I did. <laughs> yeah. So when, when I put the kids to bed, I just packed up the records. Yeah. I'm so, you know, it's self-release self-produced thing, you know? And so I just did it myself. Um, so that it made me disciplined in the sense that yes, I'm more disciplined because I'm, I feel like, you know, I was telling some of my friends, you know, who are younger than me, uh, band members of, for my solo stuff, we were just eating sushi before our show on Friday. And I was like, well, you know, yeah, I'm a lot more disciplined now, but just because I have to be, you know, I'm not one of those people that you really champion the being a disciplinary style person. That's not really me, but you be, it's just so necessary for you to do what you want to do and to become, you know, to fulfill your artistry and to fulfill all the things you got to do. Um, now that's literally just what I had to do in the last, you know, like get my posts ready before I put them out in the morning when I'm releasing a new song or, you know, all those little tiny details um, in the modern process of releasing music. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's what I've been most busy with. Also rehearsing. Um, I rehearsed a band, a new band, um, literally probably like once we probably rehearsed like 10 times for the show. And they killed it. It was so fun. Friday was such an amazing show. Um, the, the the record came out on Friday, so yeah. So it was a. Uh, I'm very happy with with everything that that happened with the release. Um, yeah. Do you do you feel it's important to create in some fashion every day, or do you really kind of wait and sit back for those ideas to come to you? Yeah, yeah. I think I've been, I think I've been waiting just because, like I said, I've been doing all these menial tasks. Yeah. Um, and so I, I literally just haven't had the time to jump in the studio. Uh, there was there was a, a small time where I was like pulling up some files and just trying to write to it, but mostly just coming up with melodies. You know, it's interesting because I I feel like I've in my creative process with Chicano Batman specifically, or just with yeah with Chicano Batman. You know, around that time in my life, you know, in my twenties, I wrote a lot of songs. Like, you know, between me being, you know, I mean, in that, that time period and it, it just came to me, music would just come to me and songs would just come all the time, every day. And I would just write, I'd be writing songs constantly, you know, and I feel like one of the reasons why I have a solo project is because, you know, a, a band can only produce a so, so much. Right. And also like, I'm just the type of person who's just very tenacious with whatever I have in my head. And if I feel it's a great idea, I want to make sure that it, it sees the light of day. Um, but now, you know, as you know, there's so many things that just don't make it just because, you know, human effort is, is, you know, limited. <laughs> Energy is limited. Um, but last night, for example, going back to, you know, the process, in in me doing all these menial tasks, in me, you know, rehearsing a band, in me playing a show, I like I feel like something was unlocked. 
I kept on mm-hmm. thinking that last night. Like I couldn't help but to feel something intense because the show was amazing on Friday. It was probably like 200 some people in a small room and there was mosh fits going on and it was just like I hadn't played a show in years. Yeah. Right? And and I was going every like the the I played the record, right? So the record is very it has ebbs it, it ebbs and flows right different types of energies different types of genres so there's some songs the super hip hop and and in in the case of a live show it was really intense cuz my drummer is strong and he was like really dropping in it and then we have some like kind of indie rock kind of vibes upper tempo and i threw some more upper tempo songs that are unreleased in the in the middle of the set to intentionally kind of provoke this kind of mosh pit thing i mean that was very intentional and uh, it happened. I threw myself in the crowd, and the mar- mosh pit just went off. So, so it was very, you know, I had got a lot of love from people after the show, in the show, after the show. It was fucking perfect. So, I, I, you don't realize how important like a live show is, you know, when you, uh, you know, unless you, you go through a long period of not having any shows, right? Obviously. And then I realized to myself. I really uh, something unlocked, like something mm-hmm. new unlocked, and also because this was like the, the my my this was, I've done a bunch of uh, solo shows over the years, but this this show was special because it was literally an album release. I have a record out. The record came out that morning. Um, I, I you know the vinyl is out. The music people could listen to the music, so obviously that's a big difference. And I really felt the love from people. Like we love this track. We love this other track. And all that kind of energy just really inspired, like it, like I can't really put it to words, but it's like super, like I said, I feel like it unlocks something in me, you know? Um, and uh, it really set me really, I'm just super creative right now. There's so many ideas in my head. I woke up in the morning, I came up with the hook, like the hook was already there. I wow. grabbed my rush to my phone. I was coming up with the chorus idea as I was rushing to my phone. And I recorded it. Like, mm-hmm. do you have a ritual when you tend to get your best writing done? You know, time of day, place. Like, I, I you know, I have a favorite chair I like to write in. Yeah. Uh, certain things you have to have with you. To me, that inspires confidence. Like, it, it probably doesn't mean anything, but I know that if it's happened there before, that at least you know somewhere gives me a better shot of thinking it might happen again. Um, so do you have some kind of ritual where you feel like, all right, I need these things. I've got to be in this place or stuff like that. I feel like just my life has changed so, so much in the last few years, you know, um, yeah, you know, with the, having two little kids that it's like, no, I don't have anything <laughs> like that because <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I write songs on my phone, you know, just yeah. on my notes when I'm like recording something on the stereo, like, like on the, on the whatever tune. So I write music there and come up with lyrics or I just have my notepad somewhere random and I just start coming up. I just write on the notepad and the verses come and the chorus comes. Um, I feel like I've changed a lot over the years. Um, I would say I was way. I feel like I'm not going to say I'm less poetic now. Right. But I want to say that I was super into poetry back in the day where like metaphors and, you know, um, all the different literary terms that you could think of were in my head, you know. Um, I feel they still come out, you know, like when you do the alliteration, right? Super simply swaying, right. <laughs> you know. Anyways, they, they I still rock like that, but I feel like, anyways, in the past, I was super into having very complex structures within the writing. Now I feel like I just need simplicity. I need to deliver. It's more about, I feel like I do a lot more with my voice than when I started. So like I could just do A, B, A, B, you know, rhyming scheme and I'm good. You know, like it's all good. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be super anything. The energy that I put into the vocal, that's, that's just like the tools that I'm using to put into the, the energy that I'm tracking the song with that people are going to feel because I'm expressing myself in a certain way with my vocal tone, you know, with the delivery, with the energy of the music. So I, I feel like I'm becoming 
and trying to become more intentional with the way everything is recorded and produced so that the words just come out at you. So the words just hit simple words, simple poetic things, but just bam, chorus, bam, you know? Um, but at the same time, I'm always, I'm always going to be weird with it. Cause I think I'm a pretty weird dude. <laughs> <laughs> Do you self-correct for your process? Like, again, you think, okay, you know, that didn't work last time. I won't, like, I guess, are you, how often are you reevaluating like that part of your process thinking, yeah, that didn't work this time. Let me try something else. All the time. Yeah. All the time. And uh, with what kind of stuff are you doing that with? With, with Pro Tools, you know, just like, yeah. for example, I record my vocals and I'm like, oh, that doesn't work. Or this, you know, this line didn't work because it's too wordy or that sounds, you know, um, I, 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 I spoke Spanish first, right. As a kid. So English is a second language to me. So one thing that I've been noticing within popular music as a whole, especially now that I'm trying to make popular music, uh, whatever, um, you know, pop or indie stuff. I, I like a lot of that type of, of, of music, you know, modern music or whatever. And, uh, or I'm inspired by it and I'm trying to make music like that. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, have the English kind of syntax, you know, kind of coolness all up in their vibe already. You know what I mean? And I feel like I'm learning that, you know, and it's like navigating that and hmm. always hearing, you know, whatever, you know, so um, it's interesting, but it's a big part of why certain people have more appeal. But lyrics, I mean, you can kind of write lyrics anywhere. You, lyrics, you don't have to, you know, there's not a certain place you like to be. Kind of you feel like, oh, yeah, it's happened here before. Maybe it'll happen here again. Yeah, well, you know what? Look, I, I'm i kind of like a nature guy. I love to be, I, you know, yeah. I was surrounded by parks in my neighborhood growing up and um, in high school, I would write a lot just in nature, pen and paper next to a tree, on a tree, you know. Um, so, yeah, I love to be outside. It's like period. I love to be outside. Um, but like I said, it's two kids. Right, you right, right. Wherever I'm at, it doesn't matter. I could be in the car. I could be, <laughs> you know, the kids are asleep in the car, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. What about... Do you notice a difference? Because I think you mentioned the phone, but you also mentioned, I think, pen and paper. Do you do most of your lyric writing on your phone or are you a pen and paper person? I, I love writing. I love pen and paper because like I love writing like Venn diagrams and just kind of like I do stuff like that where it's like, you know, I, I use the different tools that are provided to you when you're writing an essay, you know, to write a song. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, or just, I basically like do the circle and then the spider chart thing, hmm. bubble chart. I use that because I'm like, well, I want to say this, but I want to say this and that, and this is related to this and that, and this and that. And somehow that will create, help me create a dope line. You know, I haven't done that in a while, but I love doing that. And it really inspires like some, some deep stuff, you know, like crazy connections, you know, I've exciting heard that stuff. From yeah. yeah, I've heard that. I interviewed uh, Daniel Lanois, the producer, a couple months ago, and he told me how, you know, he produced U2 and, you know, a bunch of various artists. And he told me how he does all of his lyric writing, I think, on an 18 by 22 piece of art paper. Oh, and wow. there's arrows and there's circles and there's thought yeah. bubbles. And his whole point is that wow. it's not linear at all. Like, it yeah. looks stuff all over the place. So if, that sounds like what you're doing. Your, your writing process isn't really linear then. Is that right? No, not linear. I mean, um, no, it's not linear at all. Like, I feel like my my mind is, is I, I make a lot of connections to everything. And when I say you in a song, it can mean a lot of different things. At least, you know, I, I really try to put it in that context because it allows me to, like, flourish out and not make things obvious and not, you know what I mean? Because there's so many because music is also so jaded, right? So it's just like, mm -hmm. well, let me craft something here that speaks to many different things. Or not. Sometimes I'm super blunt, too. So it just depends on the mood, I guess. But I love that, that you know, idea of getting 
a bigger sheet of paper. That's, yeah. that's inspiring. Thank you. Yeah. It's a big piece and he just he yeah. draws. It's a mess. But so then do you, do you mix it? I guess if you have all these lines and things that go over the page, are you constantly rearranging saying, maybe this goes here. No, that doesn't work. I'll try this. Like, how does that, I'm, I'm fascinated by how that comes together for you. If all those words all over the place. How do you eventually, eventually get to lyrics? Are you just moving words around all the time and see how well they fit? Sometimes it comes to that, right? Like, you know, right you know you, okay so like all the bubbles will just lead you to a thought and idea and then obviously you, know, you just write a sentence right yeah and then but then you're like oh well that doesn't work but then you have that bubble sheet that has all these words on it so you could just replace one of the words and just fit it in right so it. <laughs> yeah so it, it's very very helpful it's like doing your your work on like 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 you're you're showing your work in a math problem <laughs> right <laughs> oh boy those memories or nightmares i should say um totally. that's so, why we're english, we're english exactly uh, exactly oh yeah <laughs> um so do you have tons of discarded ideas that you go back to occasionally like you find you're in you're in a rut or maybe you, you're looking for something or all those discarded ideas somewhere where you can pull them up and say hmm, maybe this maybe i'll try this it didn't work five years ago but maybe it'll work now I haven't done that so much. I have like probably like 12 notebooks that I've had over the years that they're just kind of stashed away out there. And um, I mostly look at them and just like feel nostalgic. I look back, I'm like, oh, I'm also like a, you know, I've been drawing since I was three. Like I've done, I've done a lot of the design stuff for Chicano Batman over the years. And uh, I like to draw, like I spent my whole career, like literally school career all the way up to the end, just like drawing i would get bored in class and i'm talking about being like 25 right my master like master's study class like drawing stuff <laughs> like i'm the i'm the the supreme doodler or i should say a supreme doodler <laughs> and um yeah man i i just i just trying to do music i'm just an artist at the end of the day so so um that's also very inspirational to me like just the yeah. whole visual you know helps me imagine all kinds of different things with, with the writing and or brings a mood <laughs> to me that I want to convey. I guess that's more what it's about for me, right? Like, what mood am I in? You know, how am mm -hmm. I feeling? You know, and I'll, obviously, you know, a, a drawing can inspire that or put you in a mood or help express <laughs> a mood. Obviously, at the end of the day, it's about self-expression, right? Writing is so... So yeah, all all these different tools help you know help out. Yeah, that's interesting. So you use drawing sometimes as a way to get inspired to write songs. Most definitely. Yeah. Um I guess over the years, yes. Like 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 I say, it's like all the I'll just start like just just moving my hand around the paper and, you know, drawing geometric patterns and doing this or that. And then the lyrics will be on the right hand side of the drawing. <laughs> you know what i mean it just it yeah. just happens all at once you know i can't uh, tell you okay. that you know that they're related in some way but they are because they now that i think of it they are because i, I would do it in the same session like you just do it all in one breath while you're sitting there right if you're hanging out in, in the classroom and or i'm over here you know on a bus or something on the way to to the to the venue i'm drawing something and then i'll start writing some, something next mm. to it you know, I would think they're, yeah, they've got yeah. to be connected in some way. Yeah. Um, a couple more questions. One, uh, I find that songwriters are very particular with the types of pens and the types of paper. I'm like, I'm talking brand of pen or color of ink, and they can't do, they can only write with those. How particular, how important is that to you? Yeah, I'd rather have a pen. Um, I, I really like painting markers right now. Mm. Um, I, I really do like, I'm not trying to create an ad, but, um, <laughs> those fancy notebooks, what are they called again? Oh, uh, moleskin. I love the moleskins. They, they, they do. do inspire me. I, I do like the, the texture of it. And, uh, but lately, for example, I've just been drawing in it, you know, and, and somehow, like I said, that for, in my mind, both are really connected. If I'm drawing a lot, I'm going to start writing a lot. 
Hmm. If I'm drawing a lot and doodling, somehow that sparks something in me where I, I wanna I wanna get to my notebook, and uh, and maybe that's what I need. Like I, you know, like we had a kid in April of last year, so you know, um, it's been a really busy time. I, I had an interview last week with um, a couple of songwriters, and we and I. This is a common theme that that they they really want to challenge that myth that depression or anxiety is fruitful for inspiration. I mean, this idea that the tor the tortured artist myth, basically, like, right. you know, if, if you're depressed, if you're anxious, if you just are really down, that's a great, that's a great place to write from. And, you know, most songwriters I've talked to, I think that's the public myth, but most songwriters say, absolutely not. Like, if you're in that frame of mind where you're in a funk or you're depressed, or you're anxious, that is not a good place to create. So um, yeah, how do you feel about that? Is that a good place for you to create? Or do you feel like, no, that's, you need, you need distance. Like Hemingway always said, you need, he needed distance from a place to be able to write about it. He couldn't write about Paris when he was in Paris. So I'm curious your thoughts on, on that when it comes to, you know, emotions, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um... I feel like when I started going to going back to maybe to tie something in here with high school, you know, being a high school kid, just not fitting in, you know, draw, taking the bus for the first time to like, you know, it was like into this like metropolis of like a thousand kids. Like I would walk around squinting because I didn't know what the fuck was going on, you know? And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it took me years, I think to, to process that or maybe a few, I didn't start writing heavily until I was a junior. So maybe, yeah, I mean, hmm. I didn't, find, I wasn't writing a lot at the beginning, but at a certain point, maybe once I was listening to like my mind right now connects to like John Lennon's greatest hits, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> listening to John Lennon's greatest hits on my dad's bed in his room on his little, like uh, little boom box thing, put the CD in, play it. And just, I would zone out zone out like you know I, I would it was akin to like being on psychedelics but I didn't smoke weed until I was like out of high school <laughs> I didn't drink I was a good kid so there I was listening to that stuff and it definitely helped me like hearing the catharsis and like all these different writers right these these artists especially somebody like John Lennon helped me like pick up a pad and just fill it you know, I yeah, yeah, I was filled with angst. I was filled of, full with full of rage. You know, I became like politically conscious really young too. I heard KPFK. I was you know KPFK radio is like a progressive radio station, and the first thing that I remember hearing turn on the radio station one Sunday morning was like a special on how Chevron exploits the uh, uh, the re the resources of uh, the Nigerian people. It was like a, a series done by Amy Goodman. And it blew me the fuck away. I was like, how, why, you know? And it kind of just sent me down this rabbit hole. You know, I read like, I read Howard Zinn. I read Chomsky. I had this anarchist friend uh, named Justin Shea that let me borrow all these books. And I was reading all that stuff. I read Che Guevara. Um, I read uh, about the Easy Elen thing, you know, in Mexico. And so i was i was all this shit really just made me angry and mad it really made me really mad and and it made sense with everything that i had experienced just growing up in a suburban city here in los angeles right i grew up in la mirada california an all-american city <laughs> 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 and uh you know you know like our side of the neighborhood was you know in the 90s there was you know some gang violence you know it wasn't as crazy as it was in la but it was the 90s um and it was obvious if you were you know the the drawings are the the lines are pretty were pretty clear like hey you're 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 either you know you know you're Mexican or you're 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 a white boy you're you're a skater or whatever um, because the other side of the city was more like suburban and there was like you know uh, white picket fences and you know American flags everywhere so that's just the city that I grew up in so at the, at that time it felt very I mean it, the divisions in American society are super super drawn in super clear cut unfortunately um but that's what we deal with as americans right going back to americanisms right yeah <laughs> uh you know uh the apple pie yeah 
Yeah. So, uh, anyways, so there's a lot to deal with being American, you know, period. And growing up as a non-American, whatever mm-hmm. that is, uh, you know, they, you know, was because if you're brown, you know, or black or whatever, if you don't fit the a certain narrative of a certain group of people in in the United States in America, then you don't, then you're not of it. So contending with that puts puts you on the fringes automatically so so uh anyways that was a lot for me to deal with it's it was a lot for me to deal with coming from a household that was very loving i came from a very loving household my mom is from cartagena colombia from the caribbean all you know very vibrant woman mom was super vibrant super you know we danced salsa in the house every day you know what i mean like since we were kids so going to school was just like you guys are dry as fuck what the fuck is happening here? There's no love here. What's going on? You know? Yeah. Um, so I feel like that's what's fueled me, period. Like, yeah. Like just, you know, like contending with my environment, but also being like inside, you know, like full of love. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking lucky, you know? Uh, my mom was super loving always, you know? And my dad, you know, my dad's super sweet. Do you find that monotonous activities, uh, you know, a lot of songwriters tell me that they get a lot of ideas through repetitive motions, whether it's walking, running, gardening, things like that, that this kind of repetitive motions that monotonous routines are good sources of inspiration because they can think about songs, but they're still on the move. So do you ever think about that? Like, I guess, do you ever use you know, you mentioned being outside in nature, but sitting, but do, do any, do any repetitive kind of motions ever inspire you? Yeah. All the time. Like just running, just going for runs or yeah. I like to, to longboard. I don't say I skate cause then all the skaters get mad cause I can't do a trick, but uh, <laughs> I like to take hills and, and stuff like that. And just, uh, you know, I cover a lot of ground with the, with the longboard. So yeah just moving around you know you're, you're getting that you're getting the juices flowing right so it, it really just gets the juices flowing in every sense yeah and you that you find that that's you a lot of song ideas come to you when you're on those and longboarding or running or things like that yeah totally all the time yeah yeah like i'll i'll i'll, I'll go for a run before i go into the studio like last summer i was doing that i would i would run and then i would i would jump in the studio because I'm going to be sitting all day. So mm-hmm. that, that's, that would just get me moving. It really would. I would get, get back in the studio and I'm in it, get a guitar, pick up an instrument, you know, start, do a vocal take. Because I, I always want to make music. I always want to be creative. So I'm always like, there's something always pulling me towards that. Mm-hmm. So I get it in where I could fit it in. That's pretty much it. 